Well, good morning, everybody. And welcome to the Foundry. My name is Isaac. It's good to see you here. If you look around, you can see we've got something special coming up. We're going to be having our VBS this whole week. You'll hear more details about that later in the service. But that's what all these awesome decorations are. They're set up for the kids with our C theme. And uh, we're going to start off our service today with our call to worship from the book of Proverbs. And the book of Proverbs is an interesting book. It has a couple different sections. It has a couple different main ideas and things that it communicates. Um, but one pretty good synopsis of what the, Prover uh, the book of Proverbs is, is that it's a way that life should look. It's not necessarily a guarantee. It's not necessarily a promise. But it's the way that the life of a believer should look. And uh, as I was getting ready for the service this morning, I saw this scripture and I thought I might have to change it because scripture doesn't usually use the word stupid. Uh, but it was in there and it was in the version that I first pulled up by chance. And so I left it. Uh, and this is our call to worship this morning. It's Proverbs 12, 1 which says, whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is stupid. And it just kind of struck me, and it just kind of stuck with me, and it's good, you know? That's one thing that's great about the book of Proverbs. That's it. That's the whole thing. It moves on to something else when it moves on. It's just that one statement. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is stupid. Interesting. And we're talking about that idea of discipline today, discipline that comes from the Lord, whether that means him correcting us or whether that means us exercising self-discipline so that we can follow him better. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you do discipline of us, discipline us. You do love us enough to discipline us. Probably the most famous passage out of the book of Proverbs says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Do not despise the discipline of the Lord or be weary of his correction. For whom God loves, he also disciplines. Lord, come and teach us. Teach us your ways so that we may walk in your paths. That's what we've heard from the book of Micah over these last few weeks. We want you to teach us your ways. Discipline us, Lord, so that we can walk in them. Help us step up to the plate and have that spirit of power and love and self-discipline so that we can make those choices. God, give us that power. Empower us and embolden us and discipline us and show us what it is that you want in our lives so that we can turn back and honor you by doing what is good, to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you. Please be with us today, Lord, as we learn. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing together. is by firm foundation, the rock on which I stand, when everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus, cause he
That's awesome. Praise God for that progress in that healing. Hey, I want to invite you to stay standing this morning. Discipline is not fun when you're going through it, but a lot of times when you come out on the other side, you wind up going, man, that is one of the most important things that's ever happened to me. So what discipline have you grown to appreciate later after you already experienced? Go ahead, stay standing and say hello, greet each other in fellowship this morning. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it's so happy to be here. I'm so happy to be here. Good morning, Foundry Church. I know this is, it's hard. It's hard when you're in the middle of a conversation and it's time to move on. But we're very happy that you all made it to church today to be the church just for today, right? So good morning. Now, now I have your attention. Yeah, we're so happy that you're here. Um, now is the time to pay attention to your bulletins. We have many things in the bulletin. So if you're new and this is your first time, you got this uh, in the entrance and th there is a lot of stuff that you have to pay attention to. First, um, if, you, if this is your first time, welcome. We're so happy that you're here. And this uh, yellow paper, orangey, it's called a connection card. And we really, we will really appreciate if you get a few minutes to fill this out. We want to get to know your name, where you come from, 
a way that we can get a hold of you during the week and get to know more of your story. And also in the, in the other side of the connection card, there is a space that everybody can use to let us know about your prayer request. Every week, the pastoral staff gathers, um, and we pray one by one, by name, for this prayer request. So if you, there is something in your heart or going on in your family, um, health-wise, whatever it is, put in your connection card. We, want, we believe in the power of prayer, and we pray for each one of these prayer requests every week. You'll also find um, an envelope, and this is for your uh, offerings and the other thing, you know that you do every every month, <laughs> 10% for some people. Um, so you can fill this out, and the offering boxes are in the back of the sanctuary. When you're done with this, you can uh, put it over there, or you can also uh, give out your offerings online. So we have some QR codes in the back of the sanctuary if you prefer that method of payment. But we also have registration for live groups. So it's this paper. So Life Group starts in about three weeks, and we want, uh, we want to give everybody an opportunity to sign up. So this is in addition to our recovery meetings and all the other meetings that happen throughout the week. We join together as a family outside of Sunday um, to pray together, to read scripture together, to talk about what we're learning and what we're listening from God. And we are adding one more life group this season. So we're so happy about that. It's happening on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. on Valley Center. So once you register and you choose one of these times, you'll get more information about where your life group is going to happen, um, who's leading it, and all the relevant information about your life group. Okay? So take some time to fill this up. Our goal is for everybody to be connected to a life group. Because this is fun coming on Sundays, right? And we love the music, and we love to see each other and do fellowship, but this is not enough. If you want to grow in your faith, if you want to learn more about Jesus and what scripture says, and experience real life transformation, it happens in community. And life groups is one of those opportunities. So please get connected. Life group is a, a good chance for that. And I think that's important. Yeah, yeah, you get to, you really get to develop those healthy relationships of people that really share your faith. So sign up, just sign up, okay? And as you see, something's happening. Something's happening this week. What is it? VBS. So the kids are excited. The volunteers are excited as well. Pray for us. VBS is intense. We need all the prayers <laughs> that we can get. And also, um, kids are welcome to register throughout the week. So if you think of a, a child or a friend that has a kid and you think that they'll benefit from VBS, which everybody can benefit, sign them up, spread the word. But most of all, we want your prayers. We want to pray for all the kids. Some of them will hear about Jesus for the very first time. So this is a great opportunity to share the gospel. And we're going to take some time right now to pray for our VBS, okay? Dear Holy Father, we thank you so much because we have the time and the opportunity to spread the gospel to the children in our community. Some of them haven't heard the name of Jesus in their lives. Some of them might, hear, might have heard of your name, but they don't have their own faith. And we just pray that as we do this VBS, as we spread this message that you are a real friend to us, I pray that you will open those little hearts and they will remember that you are their friend, that you are not only their friend, but you are their Lord and Savior. So I pray, Lord, that you will speak to these children, that you will use every volunteer, and that you will open opportunities to have conversations, spiritual conversations, not only with the kids, but also with the parents, and that we will be able to see you at work throughout this week. We thank you and we love you. In your name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. And also the regular uh, announcements. <laughs> we have our recovery meetings um, every week, four times a week. You have the times um, and the topics of those uh, recovery meetings um, in your bulletins. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, there's one more, right? Did we say this one? 
oh no, we didn't. Oh. She was just kidding. There's I, one. I more. was just kidding. Okay. So this is very important announcement. Who is interest? Well, who is the man? <laughs> <laughs> who is the man? <laughs> so guys, we have a special event for you planned uh, by a special team of men that has said we need to do something for the man in this church. We want to create those friendships. We want to get together. So Tuesday, July 30th at 7 p.m., we'll have a men's, well, you'll have a men's fellowship. Who's excited about that? Yes. The men are like, do we have to? <laughs> yeah. It will be at the fellowship hall. Um, it will be potluck style. So if you have any questions, Angel is part of the um, planning team. You can go to him. Uh, I know this is hard, but you can give him his uh, your phone number and contact information and have a real conversation with other men and friends and just get together. This is going to be a fun event. Now I can go. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Pastor Alex. I'm going to invite you all to stand with us again as we continue this morning in some more songs of worship and praise.
Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is Uh, this next song that we're going to sing takes inspiration from the story of Samuel. And if you don't know Samuel's story, God called out to him when he was just a little boy. And he was confused and he didn't know what to do. But he had a mentor who told him, say, speak, Lord, I'm listening, I'm available. And it turns out that the first thing Samuel had to do was go back to that mentor and challenge him and say, you have raised your sons wrong and you have done wicked in the sight of the Lord. But Samuel was faithful to do what the Spirit led. And he was available to serve God. Narrow as the road may see.
invite you to listen to these words from the book of Micah, which is the book we're studying right now, and it's the words that we're about to sing. And it's the word of the Lord calling out all the injustice and the lack of mercy and the selfishness and the greed of the people that he looks at. Just how miserable I am. I feel like the fruit picker after the harvest who can find nothing to eat. Not a cluster of grapes or a single early fig can be found to satisfy my hunger. The godly people have all disappeared. Not one honest person is left on the earth. They're all murderers, setting traps even for their own brothers. Both their hands are equally skilled at doing evil. Officials and judges alike demand bribes. The people with influence get what they want, and together they scheme to twist justice. Even the best of them is like a briar. The most honest is as dangerous as a hedge of thorns. But your judgment day is coming swiftly now. And thankfully, we know that's not the end of the story. We have that hatred and that murder and that selfishness and that greed in our hearts. We are bent out of place. We are broken and crooked in the midst of a broken and crooked generation. But we have a God who has a different story to tell, a God who came to live as one of us. Where the Son of God became a human so that humans can become sons and daughters of God. Let's sing and celebrate Him this morning. miserable I am. I feel like a fruit picker who arrives after the harvest. There's nothing here at all. Nothing at all here that could placate my hunger. Godly people are all gone. There's not one honest soul left alive here on the planet. We're all murderers and thieves, setting traps here for even our brothers. And both of our hands are equally skilled at doing equally skilled at bribing the judges, equally skilled at perverting justice, both of our hands, both of our hands. The day of justice comes and is even now swiftly arriving. Don't trust anyone at all, not your best friend or even your wife, for the son hates his father, the daughter despises even her mother, look your enemies are right. Right in the room of your very household. And both of their hands are equally skilled at doing evil, equally skilled at bribing the judges, equally skilled at perverting justice. Both of their hands, both of their hands.
No, don't gloat over me. For though I fall, though I fall, I will rise again. Though I sit here in darkness, the Lord, the Lord alone, He will be my light. I will be patient as the Lord punishes me for the wrongs that I've done against Him. After that, He'll take my case, bringing me the light and the justice for all I have suffered. And both of His hands are equally skilled at ruining evil, equally skilled at judging the judges, equally skilled at ministering justice. Both of His hands, both of His hands are equally skilled at showing me mercy, equally skilled at loving the loveless, equally skilled at ministering justice. Both of His hands, both of His hands. Please pray with me. Father God, it is not easy for us to come to terms with the evil that we can do as humanity. But that is why we need you so badly to be our Savior, to guide our paths to form us and shape us for the call that you have on our lives, Lord. Lord, to be salt and light in the world. Thank you for loving us so much that you will not let us stay in a state of evil and sin, Lord, that you intervene in our lives, that you correct us. Lord, open your word to us today. Help us just struggle through this hard word, Lord, and learn and grow from what you have for us today. In your name, amen. Good morning. Go ahead and have a seat. All right, kiddos, if you want to go to Children's Church, this is your time. If you want to hang out, you can do that too. We'll give them a second. We'll hear the little feet go. Miss Annie is teaching you today. Thank you, Annie. Hey, as they're leaving, I want to share a little praise with you all. Um, last Sunday, we prayed for VBS, um, and we prayed that we'd have plenty of children here, because at that point in time, there were only 15 kids signed up. I'm happy to report that we are over 40 children, so at this point... Um, and expecting a few more that haven't quite signed up yet, but we know are working on it. So it's going to be a great week. So to continue to pray because it matters. It changes things. God hears us. He listens. He answers. All right, we're going to continue um, in our study of Micah. And I'm just going to be honest with you. When Pastor Emmanuel asked me to do this, I said yes. And then I read the verses and went, ah, this is so hard. I'm, at, I'm upbeat. I am all about positivity and excitement and happiness, and that's why I do things like VBS. And then I read this and went, oh, no. How do I talk about this? But it's God's word, right? So it must have something for us. And so it's good. And so we're going we're gonna to struggle through together today because I do believe that it has an actually very important message for us that is truly very uplifting. Um, we're going to talk about discipline. Who loves being disciplined? 
right? I guess we're all stupid according to Proverbs <laughs> because most of us don't like it, right? It's hard. It means we have to change. Who likes to change? Maybe you like to change if it's your idea, but if it's someone else's idea, even if it's God's idea, most of us struggle to change. It's not something we just jump into and go, yay, let's go. But discipline is important and change is important because, well, we need to change sometimes, don't we? The main way we usually kind of think about discipline, or I should maybe not speak for all of you, but for me, as a parent, discipline, that word, became really important in my life when I had children. I had to learn how to discipline my children. And so I'm going to tell you a story about one of my children, but I have his permission. Um, but it involves discipline with my son, Julian, when he was a little guy, about four years old. Um, and many of you know him, but if you don't, he was up here helping to lead worship, big tall guy, um, a couple weeks back. That's my little boy, six foot four now. And when he was four years old, he lied to me. It broke this mother's heart because I did not think he was capable of it. <laughs> I really didn't. Um, and it was over something so dumb. He is a picky eater. He did not want to eat his fruit. So he snuck away from the table when I had my back turned and he threw it away and went back to the table with an empty plate and was acted like he was so proud because he ate all his fruit. I said, hey, buddy, great job. You did it. You ate it all. No complaining or anything. He said, yes, I did, Mom. I'm like, awesome. Wash your hands. Let's get going with our day. But then I happened to go to the trash can. And there in that trash can was that fruit. And my heart broke in that moment because I realized that my son had lied to me. And it was the first time I had caught him. Like I said, he was about four. He was a little guy. And so I sat him down, and I said, Son, are you sure you ate all that fruit? And he said, Yeah, absolutely, Mom. I, yeah, I did. He didn't say absolutely, right? He's four. He said, Yeah, I, I ate it, Mom. I'm, I, I'm, I'm a good boy. And I'm like, Listen, I need you to be honest with me, because if you didn't, there's going to be a problem. There will be consequences for that behavior. And he said, Yeah, I ate the fruit. And so then I had, a, I had a decision to make. What do you do as a mother in that situation? Because it's lying. Lying is sin. My four-year-old is sinning, and the weight of that was heavy on me. And I knew that it was an important parenting opportunity. And I'm going to tell you, I missed many, but I didn't miss this one. And I sat him down, and I talked to him about what he had done, and I gave him a massive consequence. Like, some people were telling me I was just a brutal parent. I was way too harsh. But he was four years old, and it was time to start peewee soccer, and his first game was that day. And I said, you're not going. He had been waiting for weeks. He was beyond himself excited to go and do this, to play this game. And I said, you have to have a consequence. You must learn. Lying stops here. You don't lie to me. You don't lie to anybody. There is just zero tolerance in this household because the Lord has no tolerance for it. That's not who you're going to be. And I will tell you, when I asked him about telling this story, if you asked him, he'd probably tell you I traumatized him a little bit. However, my son's not a liar. And so that's okay. Because on that day, he didn't like me very much. But now, he's become a man who can be trusted to tell you the truth. And that's an important thing. And our Heavenly Father loves us that much that when we are on the wrong path, he will intervene. He won't let us stay in that state of sin. Now, we'll fight him on it, right? Because we don't like it. We don't like changing. But he will discipline us sometimes until we have no choice but to change our path. And so Mike is the guy who gets to tell Israel, who gets to tell Jerusalem 
it's coming. Discipline is coming. You're on the wrong path. It's bad. Must have been a fun guy at a party, right? I bet everybody like, ugh, Micah, right? But he had an important job. He had a calling. He was God's prophet, and he did what God asked him to do. He shared this message. So we're going to go ahead, and we're going to start reading in Micah 6, 9. Now, I will tell you, Micah 6, 8 is like one of my favorites. But we had to start in 6, 9. Do you guys remember 6, 8? 6, 8 is like, he's told you, oh human, what's good, what the Lord desires of you. Act justly, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. Like, I say it as a chant. I teach my students at school, act justly, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. Right? It's this thing, it's this track that plays in my head, and I'm like, what's going on? Like, this is where we were, and then we get to Micah 6, 9. So let's, I'll read that for us. 6, 9 verses, uh, six, I'm sorry, 6, 9 through 16. The voice of the Lord calls out to the city. Wisdom appears when one fears your name. Hear, tribe, and who appointed her. Are the treasures of wickedness still in the house of wickedness while the shorted basket is denounced? Can I approve wicked scales and a bag of false weights? In a city whose wealthy are full of violence and whose inhabitants speak falsehood with lying tongues in their mouths. So I have made you sick by striking you. I have struck you because of your sins. You devour, but you aren't satisfied. A gnawing emptiness is within you. You put something aside, but you don't keep it safe. That which you try to keep safe, I will give to the sword. You sow, but you do not gather. You tread down olives, but you don't anoint with oil. You tread grapes, but you don't drink wine. That you have kept the policies of Omri, all the practices of the house of Ahab. You have followed their counsels. Therefore, I will make you a sign of destruction. Your inhabitants, all, your inhabitants an object of hissing. You must bear the reproach of my people. Whoa. Jerusalem's wicked. They're sinning. It's rampant. It's everywhere. They're lying. They're cheating. They're stealing. They're wasting. And worse yet, they're worshiping false idols. It makes reference to Omri and Ahab, and just going to refresh us as to who these people are. They are former kings of Israel. And Omri, in uh, 1625, this is what it says about him. Omri did evil in the Lord's eyes, more evil than anyone who preceded him. This is who they're following. And when Omri passed, his son Ahab took over. 1 Kings 16.33 says, Ahab also made a sacred pole and did more to anger the Lord, the God of Israel, than any of Israel's kings who preceded him. He's even worse than his father. These are the people who Israel is following. King Ahab actually, he put up altars to pagan gods. He married a pagan wife. He put a contract out to kill one of God's prophets. He's a bad guy. This is who Israel's following. And there's consequences to come because of it, right? It's pretty bad. This is not who God has called his people to be. Israel's God's chosen people, meant to be a light to the nations. The world is supposed to see God through them, through their love of him and the way that they live through their justice, through their mercy. None of this sounds just or merciful. It's wicked, it's evil, and it's not what God wants or will tolerate. And so God can't leave that alone. And poor Micah, we just sang a song, and I'm going to read those verses, but he laments, he cries out because of this in Micah 7, verses 1 through 7. I'm doomed. I've become like one who, even after a summer fruit has been gathered, after the ripened fruits have been collected, has no cluster of grapes to eat. 
no ripe fig that I might desire. Faithful ones have perished from the land. There is no righteous one among humanity. All of them lie in wait for bloodshed. They hunt each other with nets. Their hands are skilled at doing evil. Official and judges alike ask for bribes. The powerful speak however they like. This is how they conspire. The good among them are like a briar. Those who do the right thing are like a thorny thicket. A day for your lookouts, your punishment has arrived. The confusion of the wicked is nearby. Don't rely on a friend. Put no trust in a companion. Guard the doors of your mouth from her who lies in your embrace. Son disrespects father. A daughter rises up against her mother. A daughter-in-law rises against her mother-in-law. The enemies of a man are those of his own household. Micah's distraught. There is no one to trust. But in verse 7 he says, But me, I will keep watch for the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. There's no one to be trusted except for God, for Micah. That is just how bad things have gotten. Few are doing what's right, and those who are doing what is right are considered a thorn and probably living pretty tough lives. But Micah does what's right, and he relies upon the Lord. Jerusalem's been utterly corrupted by sin, and so God has to correct their behavior. He can't leave it be. This is not who he created his people to be. Not just Jerusalem, but us too. Hebrews 12, 5 through 6 says, my, my child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline or give up when you are corrected by him. Because the Lord discipline who, disciplines whoever he loves and he punishes every son or daughter whom he accepts. Because here's the thing, God's love is more powerful than human evil. God's love is so, yeah, amen, right? Amen. God's love is so powerful that, that he not, well, I'm going to go back. God's love tells us a lot of things about what God will do for us. We, we, we hear what Micah says in, in this very, like, tough bit of text, but here's the thing. God loved so much that he actually bothered to send Micah, right? These people were terrible. God could have thrown his hands up and said, moving on. But that's not what God did. God's invested. God doesn't just stop caring because we stop obeying. He continues to love us. And so these passages in Micah tell us that God's paying attention, he sees us, he knows us, he cares about what we do. He cares about our lives. God could have turned a blind eye to this, right? But what would have happened to his people? You know, when you love somebody that much, you can't allow them to continue to live in evil. You can't allow them to continue to live in pain because we all know evil begets evil, which begets pain. Living in sin is not a great way to live, right? We might think it's fun for a while, but the truth is there's consequences for our actions. And sometimes we feel those consequences. consequences. It's a hard word today. <laughs> and sometimes the consequences of our actions filter out to those who are around us. So when we're greedy, when we are wasteful, when we are selfish, when we lie, when we worship false idols, there are consequences for those actions, and we become something other than what God has called us to be. We still have that call in our lives, guys. We still have that call to be God's chosen people, to be a light to the world, to share the love of the Lord, that people would see who he is by the way we love one another 
and the way we love the world, and that they would know him through that. God loves us so much that he's willing to correct our behavior. And that's not always an easy thing, right? Again, we don't like change. And we definitely don't like to be corrected. I'll, I'll just put up my hand. My husband will tell you every day of the week, I don't like criticism. I'm not good at it. I want to be, but I'm not. But God's word tells me that I need to get good at it. I need to accept not just criticism, but I need to accept guidance and movement in my life from God, that I need to accept those things, those consequences in my life that require that I change and change my path as good and positive things. That God's discipline is about love. It's not about pain. It's not about pushing me into an, a difficult situation. It's not about discomfort. It's about turning us into God's people. We're not meant for evil. We're not meant for sin. That's not why God created us. God created us for deep, loving relationship with him. And anything that gets in the way of that, watch out. God's going to clear it out. God's going to move those things out of your way. Because he loves you more than anything. Each and every one of us. Like the people of Jerusalem, like the people of Israel, we have a divine calling on our lives. We are, Ephesians tells us that we are God's masterpiece, created to do good works. Have you ever thought of yourself as a masterpiece? But like everything about us is God's handiwork. And our created purpose is to do good things in God's name. Yeah. And God's going to work with us to see that come to fruition. He loves us too much to leave us where we're at. So when you're being, you know, disciplined by God because, like, maybe you've made some bad choices in your life, just know that it's love. Try to embrace it. I know that's hard, but prayer helps a whole, whole lot. We need to be like Micah. We need to watch for the Lord. Wait for the God of our salvation because our God will hear us. He is with us. So even in the most difficult of circumstances, we watch and we wait for our God who works with us through discipline. So fun message, guys. Embrace discipline, okay? We can do it together, right? We can help each other? Absolutely. Because it won't be easy and we will need each other. So let's do that. Let's pray. Father God, you are good, and you are righteous, and you are holy. You are above all and in all. Lord, you are you're a hands-on God that just reaches into our lives. You are not satisfied to step back and allow us to live sinful lives, Lord. You love us too much for that. You don't want us to be that. God, you are good, and you want us to be good, to be holy as you are holy. Thank you for working and shaping us in our lives, Lord. Help us to embrace those changes. Help us to grow through all of those things, Lord. Be with us. Bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. And as we sing together one last time, the rain came and wind blew, but my house was built on you.
And now a blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you, his holy and beautiful children, that you may grow in his image and likeness more and more every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed week.